what? Evolution for toddlers? And then you think, yeah, evolution for toddlers. It's just a really great concept. And so I'm really interested in the intersection of education and art and making concepts really accessible to people and really thrilling to read about. Every once in a while, a project comes along that is really inspired and you recognize that there could be a role for you in it and you recognize it could be an opportunity to be involved in a grand adventure that actually might fly somewhere wonderful. And that's very much the case when Jonathan approached me with his book. I thought, you know, this could be a really cool idea. Not only would it be a great project to be involved in, but I could really add something that would take this book to a different level. A lot of the work that I do has been concerned with scientific detail, and I have a love for getting just the right line on a scientific detail. And for this book, I'm gonna back off from that a bit and look for not only the right details, but to look for the shape of the bigger truth. Maybe I can make a literary comparison that rather than an essay, I'm looking for a visual style that will pare things down almost to a haiku with very strong silhouettes and vibrant color and just enough detail to make things right. But that what you see when you look at the page is a lively interaction of shapes and forms that really get at the emotional essence of those critters. Grandmother fish, grandmother ape, grandmother human so that there's a real emotion in the very form and shape that gets to the root of the pictures in the same way that this story gets to the root of the evolutionary story. So many of the illustrations that we see in textbooks about evolution have kind of a glassy-eyed, distant gaze that makes them look like a specimen that's been stuffed, and we're looking for characters that will be very accessible. So yes, they're accurate, but they also have life to them. These are very preliminary sketches. In the beginning, we just really work from thumbnail sketches, so there's not a lot of time invested in them. And as ideas come up or change, it's really easy to change them. We don't feel like there's a lot of investment um, in making changes that make the book stronger. So here's one of the preliminary sketches for Grandmother Fish. And you can see she's got a combination of you can tell that's kind of a primitive fish. So scientifically, we're kind of aiming for something that's accurate. And she's kind of got a sly smile on her face. I don't know that we can prove that ancient fish had a sly smile, but it really works in terms of getting the appeal. And over here, even though we haven't, in the script, we don't really talk about who came before Grandmother Fish, in the drawings and in the illustrations, there's the opportunity to add a lot of levels of those depth of information. So we may have some of the little one-celled critters and early creatures and jellyfish and worms and all of the more complicated forms that then were the ancestors of grandmother fish. This is the ancestor of our artistic grandmother fish. She's going to evolve into something wonderful and you don't want to miss it. <laughs>